Welcome back to Grunt Proof. I'm Randall. We're talking about first aid kits today. Let's go. All right guys, so if you have not seen my most recent loadout video, there it is, go check it out. I referenced very quickly my first aid kit and what I carry for basic care out in the woods. Now we're not talking about an emergency off the grid, shit hits the fan, you know, survive everything first aid kit. This is for like basic hiking, camping, backpacking, and then doing some chores out in the woods. The difference between that and what I'm doing out on my property, if I have power tools or a truck, I have a big truck first aid kit in there, okay? So then I'm prepared for all the other big stuff where I might cut a leg off or something. Other than that, this is what I take into the woods. Let's get into it. Let's... All right, I lied to you guys. As you may have seen in my loadout video, right here in this pouch, I keep the army cravat or bandana. This is the OD green version. A lot of uses for this freaking thing. It's 100% cotton, but see this one's brand new. I haven't even used this one yet. But I'll tell you what this is really good for. You can still make field dressings with this and even pressure dressings. This was our army field kit. Just this and a little pouch with some safety clips. That's all we took down range. My first time in Baghdad, this was on my belt if something went wrong. And you know what? We knew how to use it. If you guys want, I can do a video on old school medical stuff and how you could still use a lot of that stuff these days. Even with all the other cool stuff, some of this stuff is very handy. Then right here on the outside, I have a cat tourniquet. Now, we're not going into combat. I don't plan on getting shot at when I'm just going out hiking and camping. This isn't an oh shit bug out bag. 90% of you guys don't have to carry all the crap you're carrying out in the woods for a first aid kit. A lot of you guys are carrying a... I might be going to Ramadi or Northeast Afghanistan and I don't know what's going to happen first aid kits. Anyway, tourniquets are excellent, especially for what I'm doing in the woods, riding on quads, playing with chainsaws, chopping stuff. But you could also use a tourniquet like this, as long as it's the wider version where you can control the pressure. You could use something like this for a pressure dressing. Okay. So. The old school army method was you had to have two of these to make a pressure dressing. I don't want to carry on a muslin bandage just for that purpose when I already have stuff that can do it. So I could use the army cravat. I could put this on there. I have a pressure dressing. And I know a lot of guys are going to say, well, you're going to lose your arm when you put a tourniquet on. Those guys don't know what they're talking about. We learned in Ramadi in 2005, you could, if we had any kind of heavy bleeding, you went straight to the cat. And almost all the time, unless the bullet or the fragments destroyed the guy's limb, he would get his limb back, but he would not lose his limb because of the tourniquet. And anyway, if we're just talking about a simple pressure dressing, you don't have to sense this thing down that hardcore. We're just talking about a little bit of pressure. It's going to hold the cravat in place. And yes, very multi-purpose tool. Okay, I also carry these emergency blankets. That's part of the first aid thing. And I've also done a repair kit video. All right, so on the repair kit, I have hardcore duct tape, Gorilla Tape. It's very sticky. You can use it for many purposes. On this one, I have 90 mile an hour tape. It's not as sticky, doesn't stick to every surface, but I like it for blisters because when my feet are sweaty, I will have to use the Gorilla Tape. If I just have been walking for a little bit and I think I have a hot spot coming up, the 90 mile an hour tape works for me. Moleskin doesn't work for me. Sometimes medical tape works, sometimes it doesn't. 90 mile an hour tape works for me. Also, I like this tape for what people call band-aids. I have never seen the point in bringing the little band-aid gauze strips out to the field. They they fall off, you have to tape them up anyway, or the, you know they get wet and fall off. Dirt gets up in there. So anytime I've used a Band-Aid in the field back in the day, I would have to put something over it anyway. So just like the blisters, I decided to get rid of the middleman and go straight to the tape. I know people are like, oh, you can't just put tape on every wound. Like most of them you can. And if it's for like minor cuts, you know, that you get from working in the woods, I always have chapstick on me, you know. 
Sometimes, since I'm a Mississippi boy, I need humidity. If I'm up at my property and it's in the dead of summer and super dry, my fingers will actually start to crack. You know, and that's where people would put lotions and galls and all that. Guys, chapstick, man. You could put chapstick on minor wounds and yeah, it'll help you out. All right, let's get into the kit. So the casing, it's just a pill bottle. I think it's allergy pills or something. Something I found around the house. Waterproof and it floats. That's a good thing. Now, something I've talked about before that people still ignore. The backpackers get this right. Is I have these little packets of electrolytes. Not Gatorade or these beverage drinks where it's pretty much salt and sugar water. This is all 11 or 12 of your electrolytes that your body actually needs. And it's in a perfect proportion to supplement with your food. So let's say you're going out hiking and camping. You did a 20 mile day in the hot sun. You know, just drinking a whole bunch of water. You're not gonna die, but you're probably flushing out. You're losing some electrolytes through your skin, through sweating. So at night, you can drink one of these and along with your meal, you will be good to go. Now, if I'm actually getting cramps, well, that tells me I'm deficient in something. So I will probably go ahead and slam both of these packets overnight. And two packets, that's been fine for me for any kind of trip. And then we have three ibuprofen 800s. Now, why 800s? Because I became a dude that absolutely will not do pain medicine. Now, I have three herniated discs going back to 2005 from my Ramadi days. I did all the drugs, guys, and I don't freaking do them anymore. So three pills of ibuprofen 800, that's going to be for a serious incident, something that has just messed me up, okay? And why, why only three? Well, because three should get me out of the forest or get me to a rescue or get me back home, whatever I need to at least be able to survive the pain. Then I have four of the anti-diarrheal tablets. No special brand, I just look for anti-diarrheal. So these are pretty good to have in the woods. I don't think I've ever had to use any, but I want to have them. Let's say if I'm out in the woods, I'm out working all the time and do questionable things. So let's say I feel a little iffy in my stomach. I'll pop one of these, and then if I do get diarrhea, which has happened plenty of times in the woods, then I will start doing these. I will do at least one of these shortly after the first incident. Why? Because diarrhea means dehydration eventually. You have loose bowels, you will start to flush out electrolytes and very important nutrients in your gut, okay? Another reason to have these electrolytes around, especially if you're in pretty remote areas. You cannot go crazy with pure electrolytes or they will give you diarrhea and essentially negate the pills. These are supplements, okay? Just like all these pills, these are all for like emergency use, okay? So basically, this gets thrown into one of my bags in my ruck and I forget about the damn thing. You don't want to depend on your emergency stuff later on. If you're going on a special trip where you're thinking, hey, I might need some, some extra first aid stuff or I might need some extra electrolyte stuff, don't depend on the stuff that's in your tiny little emergency kit. Go ahead and bring it with you. And so, just to complete the circle of life, if you have these, you are probably going to avoid this. Just throwing it out there. Drink clean water, guys. And I know a lot of people like these catadines and all that, but they don't filter out viruses. So you're gonna have to boil or purify your water anyway. So if I'm drinking very questionable water, which I have plenty of times, I will put it in here, and then I've got these little tablets right here. So one tablet per quart or liter of water, which is 32 ounces, which is in here. This now becomes my contaminated or dirty bag, and let it sit, shake it around a little bit, make sure it gets mixed in there. Then I have the filter to get everything else. I've never gotten sick using a kit like this. Now, if it's pretty clean water, I'll just go straight to this, and sometimes I'll even drink out of this bag. So that is it guys, thank you for joining me. If you think I am missing something in this container, let me know down below. I am always willing to learn, but I have found that in 20 plus years between military and private stuff out in the woods, this has served me pretty well. Like I said, in my vehicles, I always have a plethora of stuff. And then if I'm doing something especially dangerous, like I know I'm gonna be clearing trees off of a trail when we're doing a hiking camp, 
I will adjust to that. In the Army, we call this MET-TC. We would just adapt our kit and what we're bringing based off the situation. Everything is situational dependent and dependent on the environment. As always, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. And until the next video, I will see you guys in the outdoors. Prepared lives matter.